just finished a long highway drive, your diesel ran perfectly. You pull into your driveway and you're about to make a mistake that's slowly destroying one of the most expensive components in your engine. This mistake takes less than a second to make, feels completely normal, and costs you absolutely nothing in the moment. But over months and years, it's quietly shortening the life of a part that costs $1,000 to $3,000 to replace. The worst part? Almost every diesel owner makes this exact mistake multiple times a week. It's so common, so automatic, that you probably don't even think about it anymore. But here's the thing. The diesel mechanics who rebuild turbos for a living, they never make this mistake. Fleet managers who need trucks to last 500,000 miles, they train their drivers specifically to avoid it. Make sure to watch till the end because I'll reveal the exact procedure that experienced diesel drivers use. And it takes less than two minutes, but can add years to your turbo's life. So what is this mistake that's costing diesel owners thousands in premature turbo failures? It's so simple that you'll probably kick yourself when you hear it. Well, it's shutting off your engine immediately after a long highway drive or heavy load. Now I know what you're thinking. Modern turbos are water-cooled, so this doesn't matter anymore. And you're partially right. Most modern turbos do have water cooling jackets that help manage temperatures. But here's what most people don't understand. Water cooling helps, but it doesn't eliminate the problem, especially when it comes to oil degradation. Let me explain exactly what's happening inside your engine and why this seemingly harmless action is still destructive. When you're driving on the highway, especially towing or under load, your turbocharger is spinning at absolutely insane speeds. We're talking 80,000 to 150,000 revolutions per minute. Some modern turbos can exceed 200,000 revolutions per minute under heavy boost. At these speeds, the turbo bearings generate enormous amounts of heat. The turbine side, which is driven by exhaust gases, can reach temperatures exceeding 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit. Your turbo relies on engine oil for both lubrication and cooling of the bearing surfaces. Now here's where the problem starts. When you shut off your engine immediately after highway driving, oil flow stops instantly but the residual heat continues to build in the oil passages. Without oil flow to cool the bearings, the oil trapped inside the turbo's center housing gets cooked by residual heat. This causes it to break down, form carbon deposits, and eventually turn into coke. These deposits accumulate on the bearings and in the oil passages, restricting flow and causing premature wear. Yes, Water cooling continues briefly after shutdown on most modern systems, but it only cools the housing. It doesn't prevent the oil from cooking in the bearing areas where temperatures remain extremely high. Do this once? Not a big deal. Do this twice a week for a year? You've just accelerated turbo wear significantly. Do this for three or four years? You're looking at premature turbo failure that could have been completely avoided. The symptoms develop gradually, you might notice increased oil consumption, a faint whine under boost, slightly reduced power, or blue smoke from the exhaust. By the time these symptoms are obvious, you're already looking at turbo replacement costs between $1,000 and $3,000. So what's the solution? It's almost embarrassingly simple. After a long highway drive, especially if you've been towing or driving under load, let your diesel idle for one to two minutes before shutting it off. That's it. Just 60 to 120 seconds of idle time allows several critical things to happen. The turbo gradually spins down while still receiving oil flow for cooling and lubrication. The extreme temperatures in the turbine housing begin to normalize. Oil continues circulating, preventing that trapped oil from cooking and forming deposits. For normal, light load highway driving, one minute is usually sufficient. If you've been towing heavy, climbing grades, or driving aggressively, let it idle for two minutes. Some modern diesels have turbo timers built into the ECU. Even after you turn off the key, the engine continues idling automatically for a preset time before shutting down. But most diesels don't have this feature, so you need to do it manually. Turbocharger manufacturers still recommend cool-down periods in their technical documentation, even for water-cooled designs. Diesel mechanics who see the inside of failed turbos every week all say the same thing. Most turbo failures are preventable with proper shutdown procedures. Here's the reality. Adding one to two minutes to your routine after highway drives costs you almost nothing. We're talking about maybe three to five cents worth of fuel per cool-down period. Compare that to turbo replacement at $1,500 to $3,000, including labor. But here's an important clarification. You don't need to do this after every single drive. If you're just running to the store or making short trips, immediate shutdown is fine. The turbo never gets hot enough to create the same thermal stress. This cool-down procedure 
is specifically for after highway driving, towing, mountain driving, or any sustained high load operation. If you've been maintaining highway speeds for more than 10 to 15 minutes, especially if you are towing or climbing grades, do the cool down. Here's an additional tip. During your cool down period, maintain a slightly elevated idle for the first 30 to 45 seconds. This ensures good oil flow through the turbo during the initial cool down phase when temperatures are highest. Then let it settle back to normal idle for the remaining time. Alternatively, if you know you're about 5 to 10 minutes from home, you can start your cool down while still driving. Simply reduce your speed and drive at low load, low RPM conditions for the last few miles. Take it easy through your neighborhood, drive gently, and avoid any heavy acceleration. This allows the turbo to gradually spin down and cool while oil is still flowing. By the time you reach your driveway, the turbo has already cooled significantly and you can shut down after a few seconds without causing damage. This method is actually what many professional drivers prefer because it's more natural than sitting in the driveway idling. If you have a pyrometer or exhaust gas temperature gauge, you can use it to guide your cool down time. Wait until the EGT drops below 300 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit before shutting down. The bottom line is this. Your turbocharger operates at extreme speeds and temperatures. Even with water cooling, it still relies on proper oil flow to prevent bearing damage and oil coking. Giving it just one to two minutes of cool down time after hard use is one of the cheapest, easiest ways to extend its life and avoid expensive failures. Professional drivers do it. Fleet managers require it. Diesel mechanics recommend it. The only people not doing it are those who haven't learned about it yet. Start today. Next time you finish a highway drive, resist the urge to shut off immediately. Let your diesel idle for 90 seconds. Use that time to gather your things, check your phone, or just relax for a moment. Your turbo will reward you with years of reliable service instead of an expensive premature failure. Now you might be wondering, what if I forget occasionally? Don't panic. Missing the cool down once or twice won't destroy your turbo. The damage is cumulative, not instant. If you forget, just remember next time. The goal is to make this a habit for most of your highway drives, not to be perfect 100% of the time. Even doing this 70 to 80% of the time will dramatically extend your turbo's life compared to never doing it at all. What's your experience with turbo failures? Have you learned this lesson the hard way? Or do you already practice proper cool-down procedures? Share your story in the comments. If learning this one simple trick could save you thousands in turbo repairs, please press that like button and subscribe for more diesel maintenance knowledge that actually makes a difference. Also, if you have any diesel-related questions or video suggestions, please let me know. Your diesel is a workhorse. With proper care, it will outlast most cars on the roads today. Thanks for watching. And if you made it this far, I really, really appreciate you. Until next time, keep those diesels purring.